There's no fire one. Yeah, yeah baby. baby. We should tell the whole world what we're like. So only the people who likes us will come. Yo, we don't want somebody to come on holiday by mistake. <laughs> come on. First, we need to tell everyone where we are. Ready, Uncle Brian? Okay, search for Collins. Here we are in the middle of the Pacific between Hawaii and New Zealand. Oh, click, click. See, we're so hard to find. No, we're not. There's direct flights from Sydney, Los Angeles, Auckland. Shh. People like to impress their friends saying they were the first one here, like the Americans on the moon. So if we Google Earth, does that make Brian Google moon? <laughs> Google moon isn't spooky. Yeah, there's nothing to be scared of in a little paradise. Come on. Now, these are the kind of tourists we want here. Why them? They're not hiding like hermit crabs in the resort. They are exploring in the whole island for themselves. But why are they wearing light? There's no church today. And why are they running so slowly? What's wrong with them? Wait, I know them. There's a couple from the other tourist ads. Hey, there's no slow motion here in the little paradise. This is too much to do. Really? Like what? It's so easy to go kite surfing. Well, it makes it look easy. I've done that. Easy. Just baby stuff. Easy. I could do that, but I don't want to. Exploring the lagoon? So easy. How does she do that? So easy to do that in the morning. And that are the lunch. Look at them up there. Not here again. Ah, and take a pig swimming in the afternoon. Pig swimming? for church. We wear bright colors. Uncles, aunties, <laughs> everybody. Even Poco, our local ninja. He's easy to spot. Morning, Poco! Show, show, Poco. Get there! Get there, Poco! Here I come! Poco! <laughs> Poco? 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 Now that's more like it. Hi, Poco. What about the stuff we don't have? No big hotels, no high rises. Yeah, and no building taller than a coconut tree. Hey, no traffic lights. Yeah, no keeping up with the Joneses, bro. Who are the Joneses? You didn't hear? Did his flash family's got two of everything? Two flat screen TV, dishwashers, lawn mowers, bro. For real? Where do they keep it all? In those huge houses. And they work all the time. So they don't ever fish, or swim, or cook home, or even watch rugby, bro. Two flash screen TVs and no rugby? Not even highlights? Ugh, those poor people. We're well, lucky we don't have shopping malls. Bro, you know what my mama said? If you're lucky enough to be in a little paradise, you're lucky enough. I know, we don't have McDonald's. That's not strictly true. Come on. See? Okay, these are the only McDonald's in the Cook Islands. Can we get out of the sun now? Why did you guys get married here? Be just all to yourself. Romantic sunset. So only the people who really loved us would come to our wedding. Everyone gets to spend their honeymoon with us. Woo!
lo fala ba ba lo so e fo malang e ma o le si fa po ponga ne ta to po kala me o fa ngo ina ta fa nga experience our beautiful samoa welcome to another edition of our show experience our beautiful samoa ta fa nga anyway so as promised last week, I'll be taking you on a tour of the east coast of Upolu. Well, there's no place further east than where we're standing right now. This is Lalomanu Beach, one of the best beaches, according to most on the, online and even on the Lonely Planet. Anyway, spent the night here, beautiful sleep, wake up at this beautiful beach, saw that beautiful sunrise. There's nothing more beautiful than Samoa, in fact. Anyway, our guest tour guide that will be joining us today, and this is a very good, good friend of mine. Salo Fatea. Salo Fatea. I'm glad to be here. Glad to be here. Well, if any material, I can see yours as well. Thanks to the people. Vision of red and blue, yeah, thank you. Anyway, tell us a bit about yourself, Tia. Well, I just graduated last year at the National University of Samoa. Decided to use my papers, say, hey, I'm a tour guide now, so I decided to join the industry. And congratulations again for well, becoming top of your thank class. Thank you, right? sir. I'm honored. Anyway, so what have you got in store for us today? Well, first off, this is, we're going to, you know, show off Lalo Manu Beach. Why not? Head down to Namua Island, mm -hmm. make our way back to the coastal area so for a few stops, and, you know, watch the waterfall. Nice. nice. It's going to be a hectic day. Anyway, let's do it. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Do you want to tell us a bit more about these faleos or you know they call it beach fun? Yeah they call it beach fun because you know in Samoa they like to keep it traditional mm -hmm. so yeah it's a fun experience for you know tourists you know? Yeah, so you don't need an aircon yeah you don't need an aircon you got a full wind yeah yeah it's a beautiful place to stay Manu is an iconic place to visit. It is. You know, it's really special. It's really well known on social media and websites. Mm -hmm. So it's a must, you know. And uh, 10 years prior, back in the days, um, it got hit by a tsunami. So it was really sad. Oh, that was back in 2009. Yeah, that was back in 2009. Devastation and heartbreak as Samoans count the cost of a deadly tsunami. You have a look over here. The Samoan government says more than 120 bodies have now been recovered from the tsunami hit south of the country. The death toll is continuing to climb and so is the estimate of damage to property and infrastructure. The emergency aid promised so far will barely even begin to cover the cost of rebuilding. And as the ABC's Kerry Ritchie reports, the emotional toll on those who've lost, lost loved ones... But you know, it's, I'm really happy that they rebuilt it. And you know, so it looks like, better it does, than ever. Doesn't really yeah. look like it was damaged yeah. or anything. Yeah. Yeah. And it tells a lot about the resilience of our people. You yeah, know, the what, community coming together to help them, you know. It's and, re and rebuild, yeah. yeah. And, and it's um, very, you know, invigorating for us as well. Life. Whenever you're hit with problems, you gotta get back on your feet, and, you know, just start rebuilding. And place to visit. It's a beautiful place, and you know, it's uh, it uh, it really describes how strong we are in times of down. So. Yeah, they use it. 
This is my village, home at the back, family business, Namu Island Beach Fallings. Grandfather started it, you know, and I'm so happy to continue the legacy. Oh, this is it. This is Namu Island, my friend. Wow! Yeah, it's such a beautiful place, isn't it? It's yeah. You know, it's nicknamed the Turtle Island. Yeah? Yeah, because, you know, green turtles come here and lay their eggs here. They breed, you know, because it's such a good spot for them to come to, you know. Right now, it's low tide. Did you know that you can go around the island when it's low tide? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. When it's a clear day, you can definitely see Pango Pango on a clear day. Yeah. You know what's a good thing about this place is that it's away from all the yeah it's buzz. yeah it's, it's isolated you know isolated. if you wanna if you relax you know enjoy your time it's a beautiful place man to come and read a book you know what I mean so that was a very enjoyable boat ride that we took with Tia and his uh, his crew so his family obviously owns the place and they will operate. Boat trips, it will pay 40 tala per head and it will bring you here to enjoy this uh, site. Ah, yeah, it was, it was a lovely trip. Yeah. There's a track all the way to the top, you can hike, hike at the top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. Good views as well. Nice. Especially you can like catch the sunrise early in the morning, you know? Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, and it's, it's already, you know, very refreshing for me. And, yeah. and, and I think this program is all about it, you know, taking you back to your roots. Um, to our traditions and our culture, mm. you know, having the real feel Samoan Island yeah. style, right? You know, you this is to, this is connection with nature as well. That's it. You know? So it's all beautiful, brother. But uh, what else is next? Well, we're gonna head back to the main island. Mm -hmm. You know, check out some more beaches on the coast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's do it. Yeah, let's go. <sighs> I think I'm gonna get the coconut grab. <laughs> Then I can't move. <laughs> well, now we're here at Salapanga. Yeah, so yeah. this is the next beach down from Lalumanu? Yeah, down from Lalumanu and it's a beautiful place as well. Got beautiful stretch of fallies, yeah. uh, which are beach huts and also well known as beach fallies. Fallies, by the way, is a Simon term for uh, house or any shelter, any form of shelter. So, so well, basically, because we've been around and it, this is really, really traditional. As you can see, um, yeah. the polar, you know, surrounding the fale, they, they These keep are it traditional. traditional. Blinds yeah. Woven from mm. um, coconut leaves. Yeah, they keep it cultural.
So we're making our way to Rabao now. Beautiful place. It's really iconic due to its uh, geological formation. He has that moon looking outwards with the Iceland in the middle. It's, woo. And you know, I can record that uh, Tosua is right next door. Yeah. Pretty fantastic, you know, two iconic places close together, so yeah, side by side. Side by side. Mm -hmm. And this is where they also filmed the, you know, the television show Survivor Series. Yes. This, is where, this was the other side. This was yeah. the other side for them. And I can definitely tell why they chose this side because, you know, reveals um how beautiful it is and, it's got a you know different look Yeah, so uh, right behind us is the Sopoanga Falls. Mm. It's located at the Apalotofanga village. As you can see, it's really beautiful, you know that? Man, this one never gets old, brother. It never gets old. Yeah. Just the water. Massive the water. The rocks, so it's Just beautiful. Yeah. One day, we'll think of these moments, cause I just like this and this the little things You know, this place is such a hidden gem. It is. It has hundreds and hundreds of other things, but this place has been waiting, you know? And I think this is the perfect time. You know what? We are truly blessed, my brother, with, with this island that we live on. This is true paradise for me. This is true paradise. That coach down there, man. Solid. And they've, they've even got these nice benches made, huh? Sick gear. Chill and relax. Whoa! Wow. 
Man. You know what? It reminds me of what Bruce Lee said. Who? Bruce Lee. You know what he said? What? If you put water in a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water in a, you know, a pot, it becomes the pot. And you know, it's so fascinating that it like it moves, it finds its own way. You know what? Be like water, my friend. Find uh, the way. Oh, you know, you So you know, legend never dies. Oh. <laughs> really? My cow, <laughs> Wow, man, what a day it has been. I'll give you that, wow. brother. So, is this our final stop? This is our final stop. Well, in that case, that wraps up another part of our show. Faftai Tele Lava to my Uso. This is Thea Ulberg. You've You're been welcome. a wonderful guide. Faftai to the people at Samo Tourism Authority who have made this show possible for you. And also, you know, remember, next week we'll be covering the south side of Upolu Island, continuing our tour. And there are more exciting and beautiful sights to see. And that's Tafaonga. Experience our beautiful Samoa. I'm Thai of Thai's native experience. Until next week, to Fasoi Fua. Namaste and welcome to Happy Hour TV. I'm your host, Masara Wikandabu, and I'll take you on a journey to share with you beautiful stories that are happening in and around Fiji at the moment. With over 333 islands, our beautiful nation is bursting with happiness, and we would like to share it with you. Tune in regularly so that you may have these Fiji feel-good vibes coming to you, and that big mula smile that I have That'll be yours as well. Now also remember, on Happy Hour TV, we'll be sharing stories. Bula, bula, oh, bula, bula. the weatherman. Bula, bula. bula, make sure you hit like, subscribe from wherever you're watching this right now. Bula! <laughs> Most of the world is practicing physical and social distancing, but we're finding new ways in order to connect with one another. Now today we're going to talk to Marlene Data. Now she is the force behind the Facebook page Barter for a Better Fiji, a movement which has gained over 100,000 members and has had international acclaim. Bula vinaka Marlene. Bula. Bula everyone. Thank you for joining us. This beautiful initiative that you have, what is Barter for Better Fiji? Barter for Better Fiji is a Facebook group that's set up to be a platform to enable people to trade goods and services for other goods and services, eliminating the need for cash. We've had, we have over 140,000 members now, 5.2 million posts, likes, and comments. Uh, we do an average of about 150 to 200 trades a day um, with hundreds and hundreds of posts. So the activity is overwhelming. It's a page of caring and of giving and of sharing. Let's continue to share our Mbula economics with the world. As always, it, it's not about the money. It's about the love that we have here in Fiji. Marlene. I'm not the first to say that 2020 got off to a really rocky start. Back in April, uh, Fiji was hit by tropical cyclone Herald, which left many of our families homeless and extremely affected. The Merritt Foundation, they wanted to do something about it and they birthed an amazing initiative. Now, this initiative has been funded from the generous donations of senior leadership teams. They're continuing to raise funds via their Facebook page, Sulia Lesu. We've also been able to catch up with Niraj Chadha from Merritt International Fiji Resort about all the good work that they've been up to. Nisambula Vinaka, Mr. Chadha. Great to have you here. What inspired the program and why did you feel the need to do this? We didn't necessarily have solutions to those large problems. We thought, okay, let's start small and find a way that we can contribute during this period of time 
by easing a little bit of the pain, engaging ourselves with the communities and also our associates who might need some help. I'm very proud to say that it was largely the married executives themselves. They put their hands in their pocket, go out there, create some funding, and let's start uh, by distributing some food. And cook it well, make it nice quality, so at least it will create a moment of uh, fun and celebration during this time. We're not being selective that we will only go and help someone. So anybody, so today we are at Loloma home because we got a message that they'll, they would appreciate a gesture like this. So we came here with a small little gift for them. And uh, we've done, we went to the police, we did that. We want to say thank you to them for standing up front and doing all the hard yards that they're doing in this unprecedented times. Uh, we went to Nandi Hospital and shared some of our love from them. And then we've been to various villages since then. Uh, and uh, it's not just us, as married Mumi Bay also will be reaching out to another 600 odd people during the course of this week in various villages. The idea is not to do it just once, the idea is to come back and continue with this program. And hopefully we can get enough support from everybody so we can make it last for as long as possible. Why, thank you so much, Mr. Chada. Now we are heading south to Fiji's adventure capital, Pacific Harbor, where one resort is playing host to a guest of uh, a different kind. Now the Fiji police force have been calling the Polo Resort home for the past few weeks while they work to keep us safe during their COVID-19 operations. Using the resort as a base, while they help to protect and serve the small island nation, we have Natalie Maletta, who is with us from the Pearl, to tell us more about how they are helping us uh, at this time. Bula Natalie. Bula Masada. What's it like having a resort full of police officers? It's wonderful. To be able to extend our hospitality to the team that are working so hard has made myself and my team very, very proud. Now, why was it important for the Pearl to help in this way? During this crisis, we have seen so many frontline professionals working in very challenging circumstances. Being away from their families for weeks on end is not easy, and we wanted to help. So knowing that they could come back to a safe, clean, comfortable room after their long shifts, that made all the difference. We wanted to make an immediate impact during this very critical time. So far, we have been able to reach three communities which house over 30 families in each community. Um, by giving back is a way that our team can contribute to, to helping those in need. Um, and we encourage everybody to give as much or as little as they can. Um, the secret to living is giving. If not Natalie, and if you're not going to live for your time, but now, like, I better check for Ronnie because he's got the weather uh, forecast for today and for tomorrow. Hola! Hey, Ronnie! <laughs> How's the weather, Ronnie? Oh, set, set! For today and for tomorrow? It's looking sunny as always, sunny as always. If you have a Fiji feel-good story to share with us, please get in touch. And we'd love to hear your stories. We're sharing our love to you from across the South Pacific and also sharing our Mbula spirit to you all from the Fiji Islands. Thank you for tuning in. Until the next episode, I'm here at Happy Hour TV. Bye. show Tafaola, experience our beautiful Samoa. Ty took you guys on an experience through Apia and through the east coast of Samoa and today we're going to take you along the south coast. My name is Joe and I'll be your host for today. I started a YouTube channel two years ago when we moved to Samoa called Jamily TV. Also a year ago I started an online business that allows family overseas to buy their shopping for their local family here in Samoa. That's called iBuyPacific.com. But today we're going to take a tour of all the great places on the south coast of Samoa introduce ourselves to Luputo. Very nice to meet you. Talo for love of Joe. Talo for love of Samoa. We feel love of Moa Nea Manoa. We follow we love to Inisio Mataanga and to Tomo Samoa. How are you today, Joe? I'm doing so awesome today. Can you tell us a little bit more about Tour Samoa? Uh, Tour Samoa, we're a new touring company. We launched in August last year. And our uh, passion is about showcasing Samoa to the world, but also complementing some of the work that Samoa Tourism Authority are doing, as well as the various operators here in Samoa. There's a lot of cool places to go to on the south coast of Samoa. Can you tell us where we're going today? Okay, well, we'll be moving west towards uh, Tomitonginga, 
coastal walk. Uh, we'll be taking the Cross Island Road, so it's Papa Pai Tai 4, and then we'll stop over at Lake Onuto. That's a massive and exciting day. Ready to go. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Let's go. Let's go. We're currently here at beautiful Tafa Tafa village and along this stretch of beaches are various beach valley operators. Just a nice day for family to come out and enjoy the sun, the beach and just have a good time. But Joe, on my tours I normally take a chef with me and since it's a beautiful morning, why don't we have some breakfast? That sounds awesome. I wish my family was here to enjoy it because you're right, this looks like a perfect place to bring my family. For awesome. sure. Let's go get some breakfast. Let's go. This looks amazing. Kaya chef. Uh, so today, this morning, we're just gonna have some eggs benedict and baisalo, which is our twist on a local favorite. I'm so excited. Shall we? Yeah, let's go. Oh man, that's straight up amazing, bro. Thank you, bro. Uh, well, this is something that we like to do to showcase some of our skills in cooking. Um, that's available here in Samoa. Hope you enjoy it, man. Man, it's a really good idea for you to bring the chef. It's the best idea you've had all day. <laughs> Thank you, bro. <laughs> Before we leave Tafa Tafa, there's just this one spot that I want you to uh, see. Yes! Where are we going? We're going to a cave called uh, here at uh, Vaiula Beach Valleys. And it's an amazing cave. Uh, it'll be an exciting trek to get there. All right, let's go. Let's go. This is the trek right here, bro. So as you can see, Joel, it's a bit rough uh, heading down this trek. So it'll be very useful to have some good hiking shoes or sports shoes uh, as we go down this rough terrain. One of the things that I really love about Samoa is how green it is. You know, like, I mean, there's green everywhere, but in Samoa, it's like hyper. So how did you find this place? Well, this place has been discovered uh, by the Sayula Beach Valley. Okay. And they're right here next to Mwengamanaya on Tafa Tafa Beach. That's right. It's a bit of a story behind this is there are actually some films of some New Zealand team and tried to uh, go through the cave and they never made it to the end. Really? So, yeah. How long did they try? Uh, it took them over a day to try and uh, what? map out the whole cave. No way. To this day, we still haven't found the end of the cave, so it's quite a long way back.
go down there? Oh, that was a bat. Is it a bat? What happened, bro? Whoops. I'm a little stuck. <laughs> Give me a hand. All good. Good. I think we're here, Joe. Did you hear that? Yeah. Look how clear the water is. What? Look at that. How far back did it go? Oh, as far as you can see. Yeah. So you can imagine the trek that we took. We probably crossed the, the roadway above us, uh, going back inland. Yeah. So it stretches up for quite a while, quite a long distance. So is this fresh water or salt water? This is fresh water. We have fresh water. And this is what the villagers used to use oh, back yeah. in the days when they had no water. Yeah. And amazing. Cool. This is fresh water, Joe. Cool. Wow, oh, yeah, that's nice. It's nice to take a dip in here. That's okay. That's right. You take me to where Bruce Wayne lives? This kind of looks like it, eh? It does. <laughs> oh, just watch out, Joe. Some of the are going to show us how it's done. What did you think about that, Joe? Yeah, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> nice hike. Not too dangerous. You can take your family down there if you want yeah, to. Right, yeah. How about the water down there? Oh, nice man. Thing. Forever love, ooh, yeah. I promise I won't ever give up. So we're here at 
it's a beautiful uh, national park. And in the national park, it's a Nino waterfall. So we're going to check out this beautiful waterfall. And uh, part of this place is uh, we have uh, garden toilets uh, situated in Tuntunina. And this is something that Samu Tourism Authority has placed in most different sites here in Samu. Yeah. So it's good for tourists to come and check out our garden toilets. Yeah. yeah, with beautiful garden toilets. Yeah. Alright, let's make our way over. I'm here to serve you, my girl, you're the truth Billy and girls, but it's you, only you But that's that, matter of fact, that's a rap We should call him Bounce Day Baby, this is that forever love Baby, this is that to Tuntunina waterfall. It's beautiful here. You can feel it. It's a little bit cooler here. Yep. Man. National Park and then we're actually going to take a coastal walk along the lava fields uh, which is about 1.8 kilometers so it should be fun yeah it's, you can hear the water like from here exactly it's raging <laughs> all right let's go see all right let's go Almost feel it. How close can I get? I think this is close to it. Okay. <laughs> Man, even on an overcast day like this, it's beautiful, eh? You feel that breeze. Man, look at the water. Turquoise, beautiful. Makes you want to jump in, huh? But you really can't. <laughs> you really don't want to. Because <laughs> there's not really. Oh, because there's a bunch of rocks down there. Uh, really? Uh, this is around uh, tide, high tide. Okay. Uh, but yes, this is the sound that you hear when you're around the coast, coast of the world. We're about to get to one of my favorite spots, Joe. Oh, it's starting is, to open up. Yeah, this is where it really opens up and you can actually walk along the cliff edge. Uh, I feel that yeah, breeze open up. <laughs> that breeze is nice. Man. Ali Joe. Sick yeah.
Right, so we finally arrived at our spot. Uh, this is the beautiful black sand beach here. And though it took a, quite a drive, what do you think of this place, man? Oh, it's super gorgeous. Love the black sand. The water, the contrast between the water and the sand, the, the crystal clear water, is just so beautiful. Thanks for bringing me here. Uh, no worries, man. The tide time before you arrive here. Otherwise, although it's a, a little bit of an overcast here, nothing can beat the beauty of the Pakistan beach. Look at that. How high does the tide come when it's... Uh, so the, when it's when high tide, it usually comes up to where we're standing right now. Oh, okay. So that's why it's very useful and uh, very important that people check the tide times. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Are there any... I didn't see any beach volleys or anything here. Uh, so I don't know there are no beach volleys. So you basically are just surrounded by connected farms. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of a local hidden spot then. It is, yeah. So that's the best part. Yeah. It takes a bit of a drive to get here. How long do we take? Like 20, 25 minutes mm -hmm. from the main road, yeah. something like that. But it's well worth Not it. Not bad. Yeah, it's We haven't started yet. I thought we were done. <laughs> no, we have no more meetings. Okay. So then after you start the hike, then how much further? Um, all up, we'll probably take you an hour. From the beginning? From the beginning of the, of the point where they Up until you, the actual lake. Okay. So can you can you drive all the way back here? Or you if, kinda... if you have a uh, high vehicle, yeah. four-wheel drive, or a higher truck, and it's possible to make it all the way to the river. It's to the start, yeah, it's but the you start. can't go any farther yeah. after that. Otherwise, the road is pretty rough. Okay. <laughs> So before we go, it's uh, really important that we get through a few tips. Uh, so obviously we've done some stretching, uh, but when you go on a hike, uh, usually on a sunny day, you probably need some pair of glasses, some hat, some sunscreen, probably need some water as well. And as a tour guide, you always have to carry a backpack. You can carry some water in here for your, your clients, as tourists. So I don't have and that to way you don't have to carry anything. My brother! You ready to go? I'm ready to go. <laughs> Alright, let's do let's it. Let's do it.
Muto, I really appreciate you taking me on this tour today. It's been an incredible day. I can't believe all the things we were able to see and all the sights that are so awesome here in Samoa to see. So excited for other people that aren't here to be able to come and experience our beautiful Samoa here. Um, we want to thank all of the people who are managing all the tour sites for all the work that they did to allow us to come here. We want to also thank Samoa Tourism Authority in, in coordination with Tafaonga, experience our beautiful Samoa so that we can bring you guys this TV show allowing you to see all the beautiful sights of Samoa. Next week, join us next week so that you can see us in the southwest coast as we show you a little bit more of the beauty of Samoa that Samoa has to offer you. My name is Joe. You'll find me at Jamily TV. Ubuto, you'll find him on Instagram at Tour Samoa. Join us next week. We'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye.